is my town, Tolland, Connecticut. I live in one of the prettiest spots in Tolland, one of the oldest sections of town. And this is the neighbor's horses right next to me. Tolland is a beautiful town. At this time of year in the fall, the colors are all changing and because it's all wooded, it just seems all that much more pretty. I live around Tallinn Marsh. Tallinn Marsh is one of the larger bodies of water we have in the town. The town is pretty, pretty much all times of year, winter, spring, summer, and fall. It's actually been voted the 37th best town to live in the entire country. Tallinn is located not too far from the Massachusetts border. The town pretty much has I-84 that goes right through it. But there's lots and lots of beauty and parks and wildlife in this town. This is primarily going to be about Tallinn Marsh of what I did today. And um, hopefully as the season progresses I'll be able to actually add some wildlife. part of the marsh as you're walking down from Anderson Road. There's a little trail that goes down to the marsh. This particular area used to have lots of turtles, oh, probably 15, 20 years ago. But for some reason now, I'm not seeing them very often. The tall grasses have kind of taken over the marsh. There's a lot less water now than there used to be. And there's a lot more islands. Generally, the channel that you see is where most of the water runs. And if you happen to have a boat or something, that's where you actually want to go because the rest of it is kind of not as uh, deep as right that area. The marsh is actually fed by springs underneath, and if you just happen to be trying to cross it in the winter time, a lot of times you're going to end up just falling through the ice because these springs cause a lot of thin ice in certain areas because they're warmer than the rest of the water.
So if you happen to come across the pocket, that's what happens. You're going to fall through the ice. As I walk through the woods, through the marsh, I come across the many cinnamon ferns and other ferns that are all across the area. And there's nothing like smelling the scent of cinnamon ferns on a nice misty day in the fall. There's nothing like the smell of cinnamon ferns as you walk through the woods. It's got this wonderful spicy scent and there's an undercurrent of dried leaves, and it's just wonderful for the senses to be crunching through the leaves on one trail and looking at all of those wonderful cinnamon ferns and smelling the air and having the smell of resin pine as you're walking. The marsh in this particular area has many, many white pines, and on a warmish day in August as you walk through, the smell is just incredible. It's just, it's just like nothing that I can ever explain. It's almost like burning a candle right in front of your nose. It's so strong. Another aspect of the marsh, which is really great, is the many varieties of fungi that like to grow in the area. It's best to go searching for fungi after a couple of days into, you know, like you've had a rainstorm or something and it gets warm, you wait one or two days and then you start like walking through the woods and you can see the many varieties and colors of fungi. I've seen purple and pink and orange and yellow. Um, they're just all over the place and some of them are edible and some of them, some of them aren't. But still, fungi has many shapes and sizes and it's one of the other things that the marsh offers to walkers who keep their eyes down to the ground and look very closely. Continuing down the trail, we come to the area on the back side of the marsh, which is actually closest to the highway. You can't really hear it too much from here, but you can still occasionally hear the traffic under the wind and everything. This particular part of the marsh, you will see as you round up a hill and go down the trail, and uh, it often 
has a lot of good fishing over in this part of the marsh area. Um, it's kind of enclosed, so you really can't get across to where the road is, but um, it's a nice little area, and uh, you can see a lot of mountain laurel as well, which the marsh has got quite a bit of as well. Finally, an animal. <laughs> it's only a chipmunk, but <laughs> wildlife nonetheless. I did just hear a uh, deer go by. I could tell that it went by. I could hear its uh, snort in the, in the distance. And other animals that frequent the marsh are fox, coyote, uh, probably bobcats. We do have bobcats in the area. I've never heard of a bear in this part of town but there have been bear sighted in Holland. And um, this part of the area, this part of the marsh basically is mostly where the deer roam. They bed down during the night and they run through and you will see a lot of little trails going through the woods, which they call animal highways. The animal highways are actually trails that the animals create themselves and uh, they use it to go from one end of the marsh to the other or wherever, where, wherever they want to go through the woods. They create these little trails and they follow the same trails every day. Um, so at some point when you're walking through the marsh, you may actually see a deer. It's, it's very common. Other types of plants that you will see in the marsh besides mountain laurel and white pine are things such as people bush, Pepper bush. I believe that this is a sweet pepper bush that uh, had the flowers dried from. You know, they're usually blooming in the in the summer, and it's usually a white bloom. Um, but a pepper bush is a very sweet, sweet smelling bush. Um, you also find blueberries, and I guess that's about it. I mean, of course, there's plenty of trees, oaks, and maples and things. But as far as ground growth goes, I mean, and there's plenty of things here that I have no idea what they are. Um, but occasionally, if you walk off, off the trail and into the woods, you will come across blueberries that you can eat. And occasionally, you'll also find ground blackberries, which are very tasty. Also, some of the other plants that you'll see here will be things like Pistachua, which is a variegated leaf plant, and also These beautiful leaves bend over part of the river that feeds into the marsh. Uh, I believe it's part of the Skunkamog River, but it kind of goes into the marsh and then it comes out of the marsh again. So it's kind of like a, it feeds a lot of the marsh and the marsh feeds the Skunkamog River as well. This particular area floods frequently. Um, at one time, I think about four or five years ago, we had so much rain that the water was actually over the road. This whole area here was part of what was over the road, and the field beyond it was totally covered and underwater. So we do get high water around here, and that's one of the reasons why the marsh 
actually occurred because it's where all the water goes. Um, it was an area way back when that the Indians used to camp around and hunt and live. There's been many camps found around the marsh. This particular spot is also home to a historic grist mill, which was where some of the people, such as probably the Bensons, would grind their wheat. Um, it is no longer working, but you can still see the building as you take your walk on the road. Back to the horses. I don't know their names. I do know that they're shown. Um, they were just at the Big E over the weekend. And uh, they're just enjoying the day, and I'm enjoying the day. It's been a wonderful visit and a wonderful walk. I hope that I've brought some wonderful points to people looking at this video. There are pretty places in Connecticut. There's, it's not all highways and places like Best Buy and commercial industries. We've got quite a bit of land in Connecticut. And uh, Holland in general is one of those places which has got a lot of parks and fields and woods and very little business, which some people like and some people don't. I personally like it without all the business. So enjoy the video. And I hope I'll be around to make another one soon. Bye.